this tonight's college basketball games were all about momentum. That's really all you can say about the Sweet 16 Part 1. A lot of these contests were no contest. Dayton took control against Stanford. Stanford hung in there early, but after they got to the 19 or the 21 point, they went, they hit blackjack, they went into this mode where they went six, seven minutes without scoring, and you can't do that against Dayton in the Sweet 16 because Dayton's the team that they sort of the Cinderella story. They're igniting. They're playing at a high level. And you got guys hitting three-pointers, just doing everything right, getting all the logistics down, getting rebounds, avoiding turnovers, doing the basic fundamentals, and they're a team that they want to make something happen now. Wisconsin and Florida won convincingly against their opponents. No surprises there. It's not really a surprise because Baylor has Isaiah Austin, and that's it. And the Florida Gators have a good core of guys. They're the number one overall seed. And them against Dayton, that's the must-see matchup that everybody wants to tune into on Saturday. Florida versus Dayton. The Cinderella team versus the number one overall seed that I picked to win my bracket. It's Dayton and Florida. Those are the two teams playing for the Final Four in the first matchup. Second matchup, who would play Wisconsin? That was the most exciting game of the night. San Diego State, Josh Davis scored the first two buckets. T.J. McConnell had a jumper to tie it, and then he had a defensive rebound early. Kept going back and forth, back and forth. It was 11-7 at one point, San Diego State. And this game was exciting. It kept going back and forth. Aaron Gordon hit the three-pointer in the first half. You had Xavier Thames emerge for San Diego State with a layup and a free throw. You look at Winston Shepard. It was a eight-point San Diego State lead at one point, and you're thinking, okay, they might do it. They might beat Arizona State with the 32-24 lead, but Arizona really got their act together. Aaron Gordon had a block, and I think that block ignited Arizona State because they started playing better after Aaron Gordon blocked the shot, after he made the dunk, and Gordon's playing like he deserves to be the number one pick right now. 32-28. San Diego State led in the half, and it was 40-34 to 34 with Thames and San Diego State continuing to play a spoiler role. So after the TV timeout, what happened? Well, San Diego State decided to call a timeout. That was really stupid. I don't care if your guys are in foul trouble or you're doing some things. You, don't, you never call a timeout when you're taking the lead, and... I know you got a quick basket, but after that basket, Arizona had enough time to recuperate, get their act together, and Rhonda Hollis Jefferson had a couple of free throws. There was another TV timeout, and it kept going back and forth. It was intense. And after TJ McConnell made the layup with less than 10 minutes in the game to make it 50-49 Arizona, you knew the Wildcats were going to run away with this game. But I love the fact that San Diego State, unlike UCLA, Baylor, or Dayton, kept fighting. I mean, Stanford. Stanford was stiff against Dayton, and the Dayton Flyers will be flying to the Elite Eight to face the Florida Gators. So here's our draft utopia stat of the night. Stanford's starting five scored 70 of the 72 points. Thanks for playing, Stanford. See you next year. Or whenever you remake the tournament but you won't be going back to the Sweet 16 anytime soon.